Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Consult Limited, Learning All. My name is Joseph, and I will be taking you on biology. And the topic we're going to be discussing in biology is functioning ecosystem. Functioning ecosystem. Now, before we go into much discussion on the function on the uh, ecosystem, we are actually going to be talking about some subtopics. And these subtopics are going to help us understand more or uh, sort of like appreciate what an ecosystem is all about. And let's begin with the first one. We have definition and components of an ecosystem. We are also going to be talking about definition of some terms. We're going to look at some terms that are used when discussing an ecosystem. We're also going to be talking about food chain and food web. We're going to be looking at what we call trophic levels. We're also going to discuss pyramid of number and pyramid of energy. Now, if you are set, let's take a look at them. First of all, definition and components of an ecosystem. Now, what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem can simply be defined as a community of plants and animals functioning together with their non-living environment. I repeat, it is a community of plants and animals, or you can say it is a community of living things that are functioning together with their non-living environment. Now, if you listen to that particular definition, you will discover two components that makes up an ecosystem. We said it is a community of living things, and we also said it is functioning with non-living things. Now, based on this, we have two components of an ecosystem. We have what we call the biotic component, and we have what we call the abiotic component. Now, bio in biology talks about living things. So the biotic component of an ecosystem refers to those living components that are found in an ecosystem. They include things like producers, they include consumers, and they include decomposers. Please don't be frightened. Producers, consumers, and decomposers will be discussed much more later as we proceed in this wonderful topic. Now, the second one is abiotic component. Now, what is abio? In biology, is a Latin word. Abio talks about non-living. So it is a non-living component of an ecosystem. And these include things like the climatic factors, where we talk about temperature, rainfall, sunshine, and how they relate with living organisms. We also have what we call the edaphic factors. When we're talking about the edaphic factors, we're talking about soil, soil profile, soil component, soil structure, and the soil texture, and how they relate with living organisms and their functions in an ecosystem. Now, let's look at definition of some terms. I told you that there are some terms you need to understand in an ecosystem that will give you a better understanding of that subject matter. Now, the first one is what we call autotrophs. Autotrophs. Now, what are autotrophs? Autotrophs are actually living organisms that, cannot, that can manufacture their own food. They don't depend on any other organism for their food. They can manufacture their own food or nutrients. Now, please take note. Autotrophs are living organisms, but there is also another term we call autotrophy. There is a big difference between autotrophs and autotrophy. Autotrophy simply has to do with the process, process by which living organisms manufacture their food, while autotrophs are those living organisms that manufacture their food. I believe you'll get that. Now, number two is producers. Now, what are producers? Producers are autotrophs mostly green plants that manufacture their own food. Please take note of it. The key word there in producers is that they are all green plants. All producers are autotrophs that are green plants that can manufacture their own food. Number three is heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are simply organisms that can't manufacture their own food. They rather depend on other organisms for food. And the same thing we talked about autotrophs, the same we're also applying for heterotrophs. Remember I told you during autotrophs, I said we have what we call autotrophy. And also in heterotrophs, there is what we call heterotrophy. The difference between heterotrophs and heterotrophy is that heterotrophy is a process 
by which living organisms manufacture food, while heterotrophs are those living organisms that manufacture their own food. Now, apart from that, from heterotrophs, we have what we call consumers. Now, what are consumers? Consumers, as it relates to an ecosystem, are organisms that cannot manufacture their own food. They rather depend on other organisms for food. As you can see in our projection there, we have different types of consumers. We have what we call the primary consumer, we have the secondary consumer, and we have what we call tertiary consumers. Now, primary consumers are living organisms, or you can call them heterotrophs, that depend on producers directly for food. I repeat, primary consumers are actually heterotrophs or living organisms that depend on producers, that is green plants, for food. They depend on them directly for food. Secondary consumers are those living organisms that depend on primary consumers for food and indirectly on producers. I repeat, secondary consumers are those living organisms that depend directly on primary consumers and indirectly on producers for food. And then we also have what we call tertiary consumers. Tertiary consumers, they depend directly on secondary consumers for their food or nutrients. And then finally, we have decomposers. What are decomposers? Decomposers are actually organisms that break down dead remains of plants and animals. Or they can say that they are organisms that break down dead remains of living organisms and they derive nutrients from them. Now, the next thing to look at here is what we call food chain. Food chain. Now, before I go into what we define as food chain, I'd like us to understand something in an ecosystem. There is a flow, there is a kind of flow or a chain flow of um, energy as well as food. Energy as well as food. Now, based on this, what is a food chain? Now, a food chain can be defined as a linear feeding relationship that involves the transfer of energy and nutrients from producers to final consumers. From producers to final consumers. I wish I can draw or write out something for you to better understand what I'm trying to communicate to you. Now, in an ecosystem, we have what we call source. And the source produces energy for producers. And from producers, it gets to primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and it ends with a decomposer. But in terms of a food chain, as you can see in the example on the screen or on the slide, we have it begins with a producer. Grass is a producer. I told you that uh, green plants are producers. They manufacture their own food. Grass can manufacture its own food, trapping energy from the sun. So the sun is seen as the ultimate source of energy. Now, as you can see there, the grass is being eaten by a grasshopper. So there is a transfer of energy and nutrients. And the grasshopper is being eaten by a toad, a transfer also of energy. And the toad is then eaten by a snake. Now, if I should describe this, the grass serves as the producer. The grasshopper serves as a primary consumer. The toad serves as a secondary consumer, and the snake serves as a tertiary consumer. Remember when we were looking at the definition of some terms, we talked about consumers that are primary, secondary, and tertiary. Moving to the next is food web. Food web and food chain are similar. Definition of food web, it is a complex feeding relationship with two or more interrelated food chain. The only difference, one of the major difference between a food chain and a food web is that a food web consists of more than one food chain. We have an example given in the structure in this diagram. You can see that there is a link between living organisms. They benefit from each other. Now take a look at the corn. The corn is being fed by or eaten by the grasshopper. 
the rat feeds on the grasshopper. The python feeds on the rat. The hawk feeds on the python. You can also see from the mangoes. Look at that structure from the mangoes. That's what we did. The first one was the first food chain. Look at another one. The mangoes is being eaten by a fruit fly. The fruit fly is eaten by a bird called a thrush. And a bird, that bird can be eaten also by an eagle. Still look at the same structure again, the same food web. I've given you the second food chain in this food web. Now take a look at the third food chain in this food web. We have the flowering plants. The flowering plant serves as the producer. It is being fed on by the butterfly. The butterfly is being eaten by the dragonfly. The dragonfly is also eaten by the thrush. That is also number three food chain. So you can have as many as food chains that are stored or connected in a food web. <clears throat> Next is trophic level. Now, what is a trophic level? Trophic level can simply be defined as each of the stages in a food chain or a food web. I repeat, it is each of the stages in a food chain or a food web. Another name for trophic level is feeding level. If you go back to what we discussed concerning um, food chain, the um, example we gave, we said we have grass, grasshopper, we have toad and then snake. If you look at this, we have four different stages, four different stages. The first stage is the grass. The second stage is the grasshopper. The third stage is the toad. And the fourth stage is the snake. Now, it means that we have four different stages. In other words, we can say we have four different trophic levels. Do you understand? So we have four different trophic levels. It means each of the stages you have in a food web. Now, next is pyramid of numbers. Now, what is pyramid of numbers? Now, pyramid of number is defined as the number of organisms at each trophic level. Now, in each trophic level, we have different number of organisms in a food chain. Now, please take note, this is very important. Note that the number of organisms at a trophic level decreases progressively from the first trophic level to the last trophic level. Now, take a look at this structure. Let's look at, let's take an example of um, terrestrial ecosystem. Now, you'll see at the base, that's where we have the um, producer. But at the apex is where we have the final consumer. So if you check this, we have four trophic levels. The first trophic level is the grass. The second trophic level is grasshopper. The third trophic level is the mice. And the last one is the snake. Now, if you look at the number of grasses, I'm trying to explain pyramid of number. And let's see how it decreases progressively from the first trophic level, which is the grasses, to the last trophic level, which is the snake. Now, grasses, in terms of grasses, now let's say we have about a thousand grasses. How many grasshoppers do you think will feed on a thousand grasses? We can have a thousand grasses and let's say um, hundred or let's say 200 grasshoppers feed on a thousand grasses. You see the number has reduced from 1000 to 200. Now, how many mice do you feed or think will feed on those 200 grasshoppers? Now, let's talk about, let's say 50 mice, 50 mice or 20 mice feeds on 200 grasshoppers. Then how many snakes will you think will feed on the mice, on 20 mice? Let's say about five snakes. So you can see that the, there is a progressive decrease in the number of organisms in this food chain. From grasshopper, which is 1,000, to the grasshopper, sorry, from grasses, which is 1,000, to grasshopper, which is 200, to the mice, which is 20, to the snake, which is about five. Now, if you check the next slide, we have, look at, take a look at where we have numbers, not the biomass and the productivity. Look at the uh, numbers. Now, if we say producers, which is a grass, is about 7 billion, as it is there. 7 billion, as it is. 72, sorry, billion. And then the herbivore, which is the grasshopper that feeds on this number of producers, is 15. You'll see it, are you seeing it, noticing a decrease? Then the carnivore one, 
which is the secondary uh, consumer, and then we have the final consumer, which is the tertiary consumer. Finally, pyramid of energy. Now, what is pyramid of energy? It is simply the amount of energy that is present in an organism at different levels in a food chain or a food web. And also, please take note that there is also a progressive decrease. Just the same way we saw in pyramid of number, there is a progressive decrease in the amount of energy from the first trophic level to the last trophic level. Now, this slide or this picture will tell you more about it. Now, if we have a producer, the producers there, you can see it at the base. We have 1,000, maybe let's say the amount of energy that producer has is about 10,000 calories. Now, when a primary consumer feeds on that secondary consumer, the, what they said there, or what is seen there, is that the primary consumer has about 1,000 calories. You see what happens in the secondary consumer, we have 100 calories. You see what happens in the tertiary consumer, it is 10. So it, there is a progressive decrease in the rate of energy flow. There is a progressive decrease, progressive decrease. So please take note of this. And um, this brings us to the end on this topic of um, ecosystem, functioning ecosystem. Now let's take a look at some of, um, let's take a look at practical questions in um, our exam guide. This is a very wonderful app. It will help you prepare yourself for YEC and your JAM, your SSC, your NECO and your JAM. There are several years that are here, but let's take a look at um, the practice for YEC. Let's take YEC questions. Now we have it there. You go to this, you click biology, and then from there you select the particular year we're going to be taking. For instance, let's take 2019. Let's use 2019. Now moving to select topics of interest. Remember what we just discussed is functioning ecosystem. Now we have it here. You can see basic ecological concept, ecosystem. But we will go to all, unclick it so as to pick or select that particular topic. It's very wonderful. You can pick a particular topic and prepare yourself very well for it. Okay, we're there. Then we click OK, and then we get started. Let's look at some few questions. Now, look at this question here. The specific role of a species within its environment is known as, the correct answer is a niche. The correct answer is a niche. Now, what is a niche? A niche is, ecological niche simply means the particular place where an organism is found and the function or the role it plays within that ecosystem. Then we move to the next. They said the complex relationship between the members of a community and their physical environment is what? Complex relationship between an environment and their physical environment is ecology. We move to the next. Organisms in an ecosystem are usually grouped in, grouped according to their trophic level into what? Remember when we talked about definition of terms, that there's nothing we said about producers and saprophytes. There is nothing we said about carnivores and omnivores. There is nothing we said about carnivores, sorry, consumers and parasites. If you remember, we talked about producers and consumers. So in a trophic level, we're looking at producers and consumers. So these are the few things we can talk about in this subject. So please try your best, but like you can see the score, you, you can be rated and scored for everything you did and we got 100%. So see you next time, watch our videos. God bless you.